You are listening to Radio Maria Canada, a Catholic voice wherever you are. We now present the program, Voices of Vocation, a program which features interviews of newly ordained priests in the Archdiocese of Toronto. Today's interview is conducted by Sephra D'Souza. Hello, dear listeners and viewers, and welcome once again to another episode of Voices of Vocation. Today, we interview Father Ryan Neely. Father Ryan hails from Goa and has decided to follow Christ in the most classical way possible, the quintessential leaving a girl behind to join the priesthood. Let's get to know more about Father Ryan. Today we have Father Ryan Neely, and he is one of the newly ordained priests uh, at the Archdiocese of Toronto. Thank you, Father Ryan, for making it and coming down here and spending some time with us. Um, first of all, congratulations on your ordination, mm -hmm. and we are so, so glad to, to have you here and we are thankful that you made the time for us. No, no, thank you. Thank you for having me as well. Of course. Uh, Father Ryan, what inspired you to become a priest? Hmm. And uh, how did you discover this calling? Yeah, yeah. Good question. Um, yeah, I grew up in a very devout Catholic family. Mm -hmm. and so from a young age, just going to church mm -hmm. on weekends but also daily mass and yeah. then altar serving so i was always involved mm -hmm. and involved especially in the sanctuary mm -hmm. working closely with priests and mm -hmm. um my parents always had good relationships yeah. with priests and yeah. so they were always a positive influence in my life and mm -hmm. i know from a young age altar serving kind of admiring the priests that were serving yeah. Um, the people of God that were celebrating Mass mm -hmm. um, and that were so good to me. Yeah. It was always something that attracted me, something that invited me. Um, but I didn't think about it too too seriously mm -hmm. as a kid. You know, mm -hmm. I think it was something I was interested in, but in the background. And mm -hmm. I actually wanted to be a teacher for a very long time from when I was in grade 8. Mm -hmm. A very inspiring teacher. And yeah. I kind of was moving in that direction throughout high school, mm -hmm. university, Mm -hmm. and kind of had my whole life figured out yeah. you know i was gonna get married mm -hmm. become a teacher mm -hmm. have a family it was all kind of planned well and mm -hmm. i wanted to be a catholic school teacher too so i felt that i was doing something for god yeah. as well yeah and yeah he really intervened in that in, mm -hmm. in a good way yeah um but to kind of shake me out of this um, control that I had over yes. my own life yes and he invited me to consider something else yeah. so yeah the timing was interesting because yeah I was in a serious relationship mm -hmm. going into my last year of university and that mm -hmm. came to an abrupt end yeah and I was pretty shaken up mm -hmm. and then with that I started to doubt my future in teaching and mm -hmm. I, I couldn't understand why yeah why now you know I'm, yeah. I'm about to go to teacher's college mm -hmm. what is going on and mm -hmm with my roots in the faith mm -hmm. you know it was a time for me to again be open mm -hmm. to god i was like okay i've tried to do certain things and it's not working out maybe it's time i open up again to yeah. to god in a more concrete way and in a very truthful and honest way like lord what would you like to do yeah. in my life what would you want for me and it was it was there. So in my final year of university, in the midst of this kind of stress and anxiety about my future, mm -hmm. I remember being in church at Mass. Mm -hmm. And at the moment of consecration, when the host was lifted up, yeah. just hearing the word seminary, mm -hmm. like just like a whisper to my heart. And in an instant, like it brought this sense of peace. Yeah. And all those worries and fears about my future were, mm -hmm. were gone. And I knew in that moment, like this was a very clear mm -hmm. invitation from God to consider the priesthood. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, yeah, a, such a, a gift. You know, mm -hmm. I, I've heard from brother seminarians and yeah. priests, like it's, it doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes yeah. it's just a gradual thing. And so I'm grateful that God spoke to me with such clarity. Yeah. 
Um, and I'm grateful for the grace to trust that voice as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so from there, I attended a come and see weekend and met with the vocation director and just kind of slowly God gave me the courage really and the peace to, to trust that this was something he wanted for me and that something I could be happy about too, not, mm-hmm. not fearful of. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, kind of went from there. Father, that's a very bold step. Mm-hmm. considering that you were at a certain stage in your life and yeah, then yeah. there was turmoil and things happened and then you just had that light bulb moment during the consecration. Mm-hmm. It was almost like the Lord calming the storm yeah, yeah. and and everything becomes clear after that for you. Mm-hmm. So on the same note, now that you're a priest, and Mm -hmm. you now have the opportunity to hold the consecrated body in your hands how does it feel oh my goodness it is amazing like absolutely amazing really it hasn't really sunk in like i feel Mm -hmm. like i'm so new to it yeah um it's funny leading up to ordination we have to do a lot of practice masses to get used to celebrating and um like reminding myself it's not practice anymore you know yeah, this, it's is, not. this is this is the, the real deal, deal. Yeah. and yeah. god is allowing me to do this yeah. it's such a gift such yeah. a gift yeah. and uh yeah, yeah and and i would imagine that i don't think he's taken away your dream of being a teacher mm-hmm. because i think now you can be a better teacher <laughs> still a catholic teacher yep yep <laughs> and probably not just yeah. stick to one school and i i think the world is your playground now mm-hmm. and you can teach wherever you want and through any media yeah, you yeah, want that's right. so that's i right. think he's mm-hmm. taking your dream the mustard seed of your dream yeah, and yeah. it's yeah. the veritable tree now yeah that's so that's so true yeah you know? He doesn't like take away our plans and yes. invite us to do something we don't want to do. Yes. But he takes what we want to do and he has an even more beautiful plan. Yeah. You know, uses all yeah. of our gifts you know, for his greater glory. Yes. Oh, Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Father, what were the challenges you had to face when you were discerning, uh, mm-hmm. announcing, and more importantly, pursuing your priesthood? Yeah, I'd say... As I was discerning, you know, it's, of course, when people think about the priesthood, the first thing that comes to mind is, like, not allowed to get married, yeah. not allowed to have children, yeah. and you have to really wrestle with that, you know, yes. is that something yeah. I can do? Yeah. Is that something I want to do? Yeah. I'm not sure that it is, yeah. you know, as I was discerning. Um, so initially, it was just, I'm going to see, you mm-hmm. know, the word that God spoke to me was seminary, yeah. not priest. Yeah priesthood i it was, see okay let me okay you you are like let me explore the seminary mm-hmm. and see yeah, you yeah, know I'm, yeah. I'm open to it i don't yeah. know what is going to happen in the end yeah um i remember sharing with my grandmother mm-hmm. um and on that note of announcing you know mm-hmm. my family has always been so faithful and so yeah. i didn't have any fear about mm-hmm. sharing with them mm-hmm. and uh, thankfully you know they're so so supportive mm-hmm. they always have been throughout yeah um my mom was moved to tears when i told her that's so sweet my grandma as well yeah Yeah. it was very 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 sweet yeah Um, Yeah. i'm so grateful for that because are you the first priest in your family i have an uncle who's a priest as well but of my generation i see yeah yeah. i see um and my grandmother has uh she's since died but she had five grandsons and was praying that one of them one of them becomes she was praying her whole life yeah yeah, and yeah. so I had a chance to tell her that just before she yeah. died, like the same week actually, which was also such a gift. Yeah. Um, oh, so you had the chance to tell her that. I did. Were, I that's did. beautiful. It was honestly amazing, and that's she beautiful. she told me like her advice. I told her like, Grandma, I don't know what's yeah. gonna happen. Like it's yeah. very early stages. I just did the come and see weekend. Yes. And she said that's okay. You know, just try. Just try. Just try. Oh my know? gosh. So no pressure. Yeah. It's, you know, trust yeah. that our Lord will, will take care of you, but just try. Yeah. Give yeah. it your best. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what I've done. But yeah, to, to that point of the challenges, mm-hmm. um, yeah, reconciling with the sacrifices that are involved. Yeah. But also my own humanity. Yes. You know, my own of brokenness. Like, it's, it's been a huge sacrifice for you. Yeah. yeah. And like how, 
in my imperfections, how can I be a holy priest? How yeah. can I possibly live up to that high standard? Mm -hmm. How can I be a good leader, a faithful mm -hmm. follower? Yeah. Um, really just putting all the pressure on myself. Yeah. You know? And yeah. that's where the discouragement of the evil one comes yes. in because yes. it's all about me. Like, what yeah. am I? How am I going to do this? How am I going to make sacrifice? And Without the Lord's help. It's all yeah. possible with God's grace. With God's grace, you yeah. Know, it's not yeah. even about me. Like, if God is calling me to this, if he's truly calling me to this, mm -hmm. he's going to help me through it. Yes. You know? He's not going to abandon me. Yeah. Um, he will make it possible. And yeah. um, Our Lady has, has played Lady. a very important yeah. role yeah. Um, throughout my whole yeah. discernment process, mm -hmm. throughout my formation, mm -hmm. throughout my life. Mm -hmm. But I did a married consecration as I was applying to the seminary. Really? And that's, that was my mom's that's advice. Epic. Yeah. yeah. And I look back at that time and mm -hmm. it was very challenging. Yeah. You know, uh, to to really commit. Like the yeah. application process is quite yeah. rigorous. Yes, it and, is. And uh, yeah. to write an autobiography. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my gosh, just writing about myself. Yeah. Um, it was really, really tough and yeah. uh tedious. Yes. But I remember yeah, like our lady just lifting me up through that whole process mm -hmm. and giving me the sense of peace mm -hmm. um yeah just that consolation to to do it yeah. you know um yeah, and i think so. I, th I think it's through her intercession that you are at radio maria yeah canada right. mm -hmm. to to yeah. give testimony yeah. to that yeah, and absolutely. i uh, i really thank the blessed virgin mary and i thank god that you and your brother seminarians now mm -hmm. priests your yeah, confreres yeah. are all um so rooted in christ mm -hmm. and honestly god bless yeah. you all thank you thank you so okay mm -hmm. um how many years of seminary life have you had is yeah. it seven or nine yeah seven years seven years mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. uh and how has being a seminarian changed your life and what's a typical day in the life of a seminarian mm, nice good questions yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> being in the seminary was again like i'm using this word gift so much but it's yeah. truly yeah. what it has been for me and it spoke to you mm -hmm. so how yes. has that yes. helped you so in in the year before i joined like I, it was about a year and a half between my come and see weekend to mm -hmm. joining the seminary mm -hmm. and part of my taking the leap was realizing that I had discerned a lot on my own, mm -hmm. um, but seminary was a place, um, and I say this for any guys who are also discerning, mm -hmm. it's not this big commitment yeah. to now you're going to become a priest, you're making all the sacrifices, it's just a commitment to discern further, yeah. you know, and there's a real freedom in that. Mm -hmm. I remember Cardinal Collins at the time saying at the Come and See weekend, if you join the seminary, there's two ways that you'll leave the seminary, Okay. either you discern out. Yeah. And you're a better formed man. Yeah. Or you become a priest. Mm -hmm. You know. So either way, it's, it's a win-win. Exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. And there's a lot of freedom in that. Like yeah. it, it's not like there's a pressure in the seminary that you have to become yeah. a priest and everyone's yeah. kind of cutthroat and you're being watched all the time. Yeah. It's really a place to discern with mm -hmm. with men who are like-minded, mm -hmm. who are in the battle, in the journey together. Yeah. yeah. And that was, um, yeah, just really encouraging, mm -hmm. you know, because as soon as I entered the seminary, I entered a brotherhood mm -hmm. of, of men who had been in the seminary for many years yeah. and were great older brothers to me. Mm -hmm. And I could look to them and aspire to be like them. Mm -hmm. And then also guys who were joining with me and we could grow together in mm -hmm. fraternity and support one another. Mm -hmm. And so throughout my seven years, that was just wonderful to experience, mm -hmm. you know, through the studies, through the late nights, mm -hmm. meals and sports. It was just a very fruitful, friendly yeah. home environment. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, it yeah. was a home um, with our, our priest fathers who were really, really good fathers to us. Yeah. Um, always looking out for us, always encouraging us, mm -hmm. inspiring us about how to be good fathers. Mm -hmm. Um, and the structure of the day was very beneficial to us as well, especially for me. I, I appreciate that structure. Yeah. So, Are you an early riser? I struggle with the early mornings. Okay. You think after seven you years? Oh, uh, 
<laughs> but 6 30 a.m we'd start with okay. you know adoration of the blessed sacrament and then yeah. morning prayer and breakfast and then depending on the day you'd have you know class at nine I or see. some free time to okay. ease in a little bit more to do studies mm-hmm. um lunch was there at noon mm-hmm. in the seminary or mm-hmm. if we were downtown at class mm-hmm. um, we'd take a lunch with us to go right so maybe afternoon classes mm-hmm. or afternoon time to study. Mm-hmm. Maybe squeeze in a nap if mm-hmm. it's a especially stressful time. Mm-hmm. Um, but a good amount of free time, I'd say, during the day to, mm-hmm. to arrange our schedule as we need it. Yeah. Yeah. And then depending on the day as well, sometimes we had mass in the evening together. Okay. Um, or we'd have mass in the morning some days of the week. I see. But dinner was always in community. Yeah. yeah. And then after dinner... Again, either time to study. Mm-hmm. We'd like to play sports quite a bit in the right. evenings as well. What's so it's great to get exercise. Amazing. And what's your favorite yeah. sport? So- There's only one answer. Yeah. Soccer is Amazing. my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Awesome. Do, you, do you have any favorite teams? I do. Internationally. I, do. I or am a well, diehard Manchester United fan. They're okay. Not, not in a great place. Also saying the currently. right answers. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's great. Some good fans here. <laughs> they're not doing so well right now. No, but... they're not. They're not. But then but if you love there. something that's perfect, what's the use? Exactly. No, exactly. you love the imperfections right? also. A true yeah. fan, you know, is yeah. with them through thick and thin. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And they had good years. That's true. Yeah. Many, many. Yeah, many. yeah. And yeah. they go way back in history. So yeah. they're yeah. still the greatest in England. Yeah. They've won the most titles. England Won the most titles overall. Okay, so yes. Can't take that away. Can't yet. Uh, yet. 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 <laughs> and uh, country-wise, which team do you support? I always supported England. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I supported Portugal. Portugal, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Go, go and connection. <laughs> go and go and connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice to know that you're from Goa too, Father. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 my mom's I, side. Yeah? yeah. Uh, okay. And uh, on your dad's side, he's Canadian. He's, he's, he's Bombay. Bombay. And yeah. your mom's and from Goa. Goa. Oh, very yeah. nice. Which yeah. part of Goa? Yeah. Um, Do you know? M- Moira. Village, Moira, Goa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. 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 TV Goa. Saliga. Ah, Saliga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from TV. Okay. So that's that's closer to the north of, of Goa. Okay. Pretty close okay. to old Goa. Yeah. So okay. we have... Uh, now, now this brings me to the next question. Who's your favorite saint? My favorite saint. Yeah. Right now, I'd mm-hmm. say it's Saint Teresa of Lisieux. Oh, I see. She okay. she's been a good companion throughout my seminary That's very formation. sweet. That's very yeah, sweet. Especially my spiritual year. And yeah. Then, yeah. And then again in in this past year, mm-hmm. um, I really like her her little way. Yeah. You know her little yeah. way to God of mm-hmm. just complete trust. You know, complete yeah. abandonment to God's mm-hmm. providence. Mm-hmm. humility mm-hmm. um and then doing things with with love you know yeah. all of that um mm-hmm. but it's not so much the soaring in the heights yeah. with the great saints but mm-hmm. just knowing that in our in our brokenness mm-hmm. in our littleness yeah. that god mm-hmm. looks at us with great love and and comes to us and mm-hmm. lifts us up mm-hmm. him. so if i found her to be very consoling yeah um yeah yeah that's that's really mm-hmm. nice so for a moment there i thought you might say saint francis xavier but <laughs> <laughs> but but okay that's why i, I jumped to Canada, that yeah, uh, yeah, so. yeah okay but have you ever been for his exposition in in goa the exposition when of his body I, I visited the church there bon Jesus, bon Jesus, yeah, yeah yeah once once maybe yeah, twice. Me too. yeah oh yeah. nice yeah, I, yeah. I visited yeah. once so nice, nice. yeah yeah but the first time Actually, the first time I knew about St. Francis Xavier's yeah. bones was when he came here. He was at the I cathedral. See. I think it was his, 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 right, his right arm. His right hand, arm, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that so was pretty cool. Yeah. I have fond memories of my grandma telling me stories about uh, how his hand came to be the legend that it is. And mm. uh, uh, we used to have comic books. Really? of St. Francis Xavier, like in okay. comic format. Yeah. And uh, they would give us those books in school. I'm from a convent school, so okay. it was okay to distribute those that time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I used to love reading those, hmm. aside from the secular comic yeah, books, but yeah, those yeah. too. And cool. yeah, and uh, he has always been... Uh, if I might, if I might digress, mm-hmm. he's always been a part of my life, uh, yeah. Saint Francis Xavier, mainly because by 
association goa and him and mm-hmm. all all the legends and all the stories and all the facts uh, he's a pretty miraculous saint and fun fact he's spanish mm. <laughs> but it's okay <laughs> portugal is on the map but okay. <laughs> yeah yeah so so That's yeah cuz cuz i i do have uh, grandparents and great grandparents who are portuguese okay, yeah, okay. so i That's suppose right. that where the connection lies for me That's fair. Yeah. so uh thanks father for sharing mm-hmm. about saint trees of lisio um i would imagine that she's a sort of a life companion for you mhm yeah in yeah. And in more ways than one, mm-hmm. you know, being your friend through this journey, yes. and she's she's helped you in her little way every step of the way, yeah, yeah. and um, I think that's very profound. And I I also noticed the ring on your finger, mm-hmm. which is very sweet. Yeah, the yes. gold band, the gold one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, And and the rosary ring, team mm-hmm. rosary ring. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah mm-hmm. that's that's very inspiring to know and i am glad that she's been your friend through this through yeah, this journey yeah. thank you, thank you. um is there any particular spirituality you found yourself inclined to mm. uh for example it may be ignatian maybe thomistic it may be be mystical mm. uh what what sort of spirituality yeah. speaks to you i'd say yeah i haven't really adopted okay. any, anyone per yeah. se yeah um, but at different times mm-hmm. in, in my formation like ignatian spirituality was very big when I we see. were on spiritual year yeah um because at the time the year kind of was building up to the 30-day spiritual exercises oh, okay that was like the culmination of yeah. our spiritual year yeah and so we got a lot of formation in in the ignatian way and so yeah. Yeah. i find myself you know paying attention yeah. you know to the spirits and consolation yeah. desolation and mm-hmm. just kind of being attentive to those that's and i found very cool the 30-day spiritual exercises i'd say saves my vocation to the priesthood because I was oh. really experiencing doubts there. Really? And uh at that time, yeah, just struggling with my own humanity yeah. Yeah. with um like the crises in the church yeah. and thinking, can I really give myself to this? Exactly. And it was through the meditations, through the contemplations. Yeah. Um where I received the grace to again kind of die to myself mm-hmm. and and trust that, you know, yeah. God knows what he's doing. Yeah. And it was a blessed mother in one of my um, contemplations who, yeah. who said to me, you know, yeah. um, God will give you the grace yeah. you know, to do what he's asking of you mm-hmm. and to be not afraid. So, yeah. um, so that was a beautiful moment mm-hmm. that has, has sustained me, will continue to sustain me Amen. through that Ignatian spirituality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then St. Therese of Lisieux, like her little yeah. way, I say yeah. that. Yeah. It's not, I guess... Carmelite spirituality yeah. per se, but yeah. it's kind of her own unique. Yes, it is. She's a it doctor is. of the church, she is. you know. She so is. Yeah, yeah. I find I find that to be yeah. resonating with me yeah. at, at this time, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, it really really speaks to me. Mm-hmm. Um, something I yeah just try to do every day. Amazing. Actually, the the motto I chose or the the image I chose on my prayer card is is divine mercy. Okay. Which very closely related to her message yes. too, right? Just Jesus. Yeah. I trust, I in, trust you. in you. I trust in you. Know, Jesus, yeah. I trust in you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's amazing, Father. And picking up on what you said about the challenges in the church or the crisis in the church, mm-hmm. what do you think is the role of a priest today to counter those challenges? Yeah. Yeah. I think above all, it's it's holiness of life. Yeah. You know, that's that's really been. I'd say drilled into us mm-hmm. in in formation, yeah. you know, to be a holy priest, mm-hmm. and of course we can't do that on our own. Yeah. Um, but to be like authentic followers of Jesus, mm-hmm. you know, if if we're gonna make a difference in the world, we have to live that, you mm-hmm. know, and that comes fundamentally from a close relationship with God, mm-hmm. you know, a deep connection with our Lord in the Eucharist. Yeah. Docility to the Holy Spirit, close mm-hmm. relationship with our Blessed Mother. Yeah. 
to to grow in holiness mm -hmm. um, ourselves yeah first of all you know mm -hmm. and then from that to be able to give that love of God to others but we have to experience it first yeah so firstly the life of prayer and then yeah growing in holiness trying to be yeah the most holy priest that we possibly can be yes. yeah and we're and all called to be saints we're all called to be saints yeah. exactly yeah. exactly and yeah. so to live that and to model that mm -hmm. for others mm -hmm. is i think the most important thing yeah um and that will yeah speak for itself yes. you know firstly it's in the before we, results yeah. yeah 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 and then you know from that of course from our prayer life to to preach the word of god mm -hmm. to proclaim the name of jesus um mm -hmm. to everyone that we encounter yeah which is challenging in this in this day and age. Yes, you know, I find for myself it like it's easier in the church, yeah. you know, where it's kind of safe. Yeah. But how do we reach out to others? I think that's where it's going to be very challenging for myself, for the church mm -hmm. as well, you know, mm -hmm. to continue to bring others mm -hmm. into the fold, yeah. you know, like to reach out to that lost sheep and mm -hmm. Pope Francis talks about that a lot, yeah. you know, bringing in the scattered. Mhm. Mm I think that's and you a big should challenge. know the smell of your sheep. Exactly. Yeah? Okay. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You remember? <laughs> which is true. Which, which means true, yeah. being there. You know. Yeah. You know, not not hiding away in, in our comfortable mm -hmm. rectories or whatnot, yeah. but uh, to really be present. Mm -hmm. Really be present. Yeah. yeah. Amen to that. Uh, speaking of Pope Francis, uh, he's known to have said that the internet is the mm -hmm. sixth continent so uh a country within itself and it has its own citizens mm -hmm. so father do you see using the internet or the means of the media to evangelize to yeah, yeah. take your ministry forward mm -hmm. or is it good to have a balance of both the good old-fashioned churches mm -hmm. and also this as an uh, as an addendum to it right right i think i think it's a both end right yeah like we have yeah. to of course we're involved in the church as a as a parish priest my ministry yes. will be there yeah um but i found in in the ministry experiences i've had so far mm -hmm. like a good balance of both mm -hmm. especially for young people yeah i find who are yeah on on the internet on social media yes more than they should be yes that's for sure true. guilty yeah, me too no. yeah <laughs> but uh to be able to reach out to them we have to yeah mm -hmm. we have to be present yeah. online yeah. and i found yeah when i was on internship mm -hmm. um working with young people mm -hmm. we would do like instagram kind of yeah cute live yeah i don't even know what it's called live yeah. videos or yeah, live videos, reels yeah. and things like that yeah, just yeah. to just to have a presence yeah to kind of meet them where they're at yeah you know? yeah meet them where they're and at that's absolutely yeah. yeah i think for myself it'll it'll be you know in communication with my pastor and my mm -hmm. first assignment and mm -hmm. to see what's happening there i know yeah. they have an active youth ministry at saint justin martyr so i'm looking forward to getting involved and i'm sure they're they're on all sorts of social media that's true so i, I think, think every church yeah they have a page right now on instagram at least i don't i wouldn't know much right, about facebook right. so. yeah but i think it's important not to be afraid to to get involved you know to, to be as um i guess to use all these means of, of yeah. communication to reach as many people as we can yeah uh, to, do, to do interviews like this on radio maria that's another Absolutely. form of uh, this is media yeah, too. yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly <laughs> exactly so awesome uh, have you heard of the possibility of having ai priests i heard something about yeah. Ca catholic answers recently putting something out yeah and... yeah so well mm -hmm. i saw the question and i said to myself i'm not reading this it's, it's not <laughs> gonna be ai priests mm -hmm. not a chance but with the development of of you know a computer that is probably faster than google mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know does everything from drafting a resume to to giving you answers better than google do you mm -hmm. think that uh, you know there's a possibility that a priest may not be a human being in the future. Oh my goodness! Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of scary. To it, think is, about. it is. It yeah, is. Yeah, and yeah. and uh, yeah. well, the rest of us are still human, not mm -hmm. cyborgs yet. So <laughs> I don't know how that interaction and connection would mm -hmm. take place. But 
but well scary thought i think with with limits you know like, with limit yes there can be yeah good uses yeah. of ai you yeah. know to yeah. to be able to answer questions yes. for example to yeah. to be able to yeah communicate answers mm -hmm. in a way that typing into google won't wouldn't be yeah. as um beneficial maybe for people yeah, yeah. um but our faith is is incarnational you know like yes. jesus came in the flesh we are body and soul yes so we can't separate that yes from from our faith you know yeah. so we can never have an ai priest for mm -hmm. example mm -hmm. um we need that person to person contact absolutely you know, to... how would one make a confession if the priest <laughs> exactly, exactly that was the problem i think with one of the yeah. the recent ai priests that someone asked for yes, absolution yes. and, and like, then exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well yeah, yeah yeah god has chosen god you know, has human chosen. instruments yeah. to communicate his his love and yeah. to, to affect the sacraments mm -hmm. not uh yeah. artificial technology amen so. yes thanks be to god for that mm -hmm. yeah father how do you uh or should i should i ask what exactly do you see your ministry being for example do you want to cater to the youth do you want to mm -hmm. cater to people discerning the religious life mm. or the family life yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or do you want to cater to people uh, you know in the sunset of their lives and associated issues with that right, where right. do you see your ministry budding mm. or would you consider being a missionary for example right, right. where do you see father ryan yeah, leaving yeah. a legacy behind mm. well my calling was to the diocesan priesthood okay. and so that typically involves parish ministry yeah but the the line that comes to mind right now i believe saint paul is to be all things to all all, all things people, to all people you know? yeah yeah um not to play favorites of course you yeah. know but to to be that uh, connection between God and his people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So to be reaching out to everybody, you mm -hmm. know, everybody that I encounter, mm -hmm. um, especially in the parish, of course, where yeah. you have people of all ages, yes. you know, so everybody needs something different. Yeah. You know, there, there are the, the faithful older mm -hmm. parishioners, yeah. you know, who need continued encouragement. Yeah. Um, those who are sick, mm -hmm. those who are neglected, yes. isolated, who yeah. need particular care, yeah. you know, especially end of life. Yes. Um, when our country where that is a big problem, mm -hmm. a big problem, you mm -hmm. know, not to feel like a burden, but to, to be cared for, you know, yeah. with the same love that, that we all Absolutely. need and deserve. Yeah. Um, and then to accompany people through their, their life, through their milestones, yeah. through the sacraments, mm -hmm. you know, to be with them, baptism, mm -hmm. first communion, confirmation, mm -hmm. weddings, funerals. Yeah. Um, I think I, I have um, maybe more gifts in working with young people, mm -hmm. even though it's challenging. Yeah. You know, I, th I definitely think going into yeah. high school especially will be yeah. a challenge, but yeah. we have to, I know I have to be, um, you know, working with the youth inspiring them bringing them closer to god yeah. you know we we definitely need more youth in our churches yes um, absolutely so yeah youth ministry has to be um, your focus invested in okay yeah yeah, yeah invested a focus in. not a necessarily focus. yours but yeah. a focus yeah certainly certainly yeah. And yeah. for me that will always happen under obedience to yes know, at least for now my pastor yeah and what whatever plans he has for me yeah Amen. Um, but yeah. I look forward to, you know, going into the schools, mm -hmm. to witnessing, you know, to the yeah. faith, you know, I don't know how much encounter they have with that, mm -hmm. but uh, to be a visible sign you know, yes. of God's love and yeah. to invite them in. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, definitely youth will be a focus, yeah. a big focus. Um, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And Father, how would you combine, now this is your past pastoral work mm -hmm. uh, this how would you combine this work with your prayer life rather how would you balance this and your prayer life mm -hmm. out yeah i know i, I struggle with the mornings but uh <laughs> i know that's going to be very important to yeah to to have a steady yeah prayer life you know for mm -hmm. sure but mm -hmm. i think 
from what seasoned priests have been telling me, you mm-hmm. know, the morning is the best time before yes. before the day begins, yeah. and then you, it can be pulled in all sorts of directions. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's going to begin with certainly the breviary, yeah. praying those faithfully, but mm-hmm. then also I need to really commit to and not sacrifice that quiet prayer, mm-hmm. that quiet prayer time, you know, the yeah. mental prayer with yes. with our Lord. Yeah. Um, I found in my own journey and different retreats that I've been on Mm -hmm. um, to really bring, you know, what's going on in my heart, Mm -hmm. especially the distress that I'm experiencing at any given time to Mm -hmm. our Lord Mm -hmm. and to just speak with him about that, to allow him to meet me there and to kind of be recharged, you know, Um, to kind of renounce all of those evil spirits that are discouraging, Mm -hmm. that cause anxiety and stress. And then to return to that place of abiding because to be able to serve, to be able to be on mission, we have to be in that place of abiding with God, you know, to be really with him. And then from there I can do what he wants me to do. Yes. If I'm separated from him, then I'll be thinking, am I just doing what I want to do? What I think is best. Like I've got to be doing what he yeah. needs from me and so yeah that prayer life is is crucial and i know it's going to be challenging yeah i know times will sometimes it'll be busier than others yeah. more difficult than others mm-hmm. other times it'll come very mm-hmm. easily mm-hmm. um but it's certainly committing to that prayer life to continuing the the strong roots that have been instilled in me through yeah. seminary formation and bringing yeah. that to the parish mm-hmm. um so yes bravery Growing, growing in my devotion to the rosary as well. I see. That's, Do you uh, pray it daily? I don't pray it daily. And I that's, see. I have to confess that. Okay. Um, <laughs> but if not the full rosary every day, yeah. you know, it's a decade. Yeah. And if not, it's a, a very slow and yeah. thoughtful Hail Mary. Yeah. Um, but I, that's part of the reason for my for rosary, the rosary ring. ring yes. To, yeah. to have it front and center. So yes. Throughout the day, I find myself, you know, yeah. I have a quick moment and I'm, and I'm praying a Hail Mary mm-hmm. for whatever intention comes to mind. Yes. And trying to remain close to Our Lady. Yeah. Praying my consecration prayer to yeah. her, renewing that consecration. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to get there, you know, every yes, day. Yes, absolutely. Because I know how important it is. Yeah. You know, how important it is for it's, yeah. the battle. The, the battle. battle. Yeah. Very true. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and she crushes Satan's mm. head, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's she's the one. She's the woman in charge. Exactly. Um, do you have a devotion to the three Hail Marys? Like that's an emergency little rosary that people usually okay. say. Like if you can pray the whole rosary, mm-hmm. one says the Our Father, three Hail Marys, and the Glory Be. Right, right. And you're good to go. Okay. okay. It's not a substitution for the rosary, of course, but of course. Yeah, but yeah. in the event that one is caught up with things of life yeah, one yeah, says yeah. that right so right, right, right. so uh, in case i'm caught up which i usually am mm. <laughs> i resort to the three hill marys which i learned growing up yes, so yes. i like that yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. so yeah. now you know yeah. <laughs> uh father now the billion dollar question okay um you've had uh, shall we say a very real experience with, with, uh, and you've been vocal about it as you told us earlier that uh, you you've had a relationship, and uh, you wanted to get married and have children. Mm-hmm. Now you take vows of celibacy. Yes. Now how has celibacy been a blessing to you, and mm-hmm. how is it going to be a blessing to you in the future? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's. That's a very challenging question in mm-hmm. a way because it's it's quite a mysterious thing to me yeah. still you know yeah. it's this it's this gift that has been bestowed on me yeah. which it's it's not always easy to see it as a gift yeah. you know I had yeah. to really discern that yes. and to really pray through that yeah um, but I see it as this um, opportunity to be more closely conformed to to Christ you know and then also to be more available, you know, mm-hmm. to be available with undivided heart yes. to serving his people. Yeah. And so celibacy is my way of, or God's way through me of giving yes. me this opportunity to give of myself mm-hmm. completely, completely, you know, completely to, to him and to the church. Yeah. And, uh, 
that's what it's all about, you know. Yeah. I was reminded by Archbishop Leo in his homily at our ordination. Yes, yes. We're not bachelors, yeah. you know, but we are called to be a husband to yes. the, our bride, the church. Yes. And a, a spiritual father, father yeah. you know, to yeah. the children that will be entrusted to us. Yes. And so it's it's a blessing. It's also a huge responsibility. Yes, it is, know? yeah. To... I think responsibility is a nice word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's not just a sacrifice either, you yeah. know. It's yeah. it's a joyful calling, where this is how God is gonna continue to work out my redemption. This yes, is, this is the means that He has chosen yes. for me. Yeah, and I can lean into that with with trust. You know, that's, amazing. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. And I don't. I mean, just my two pence. Uh, it's not only your redemption, but through you, mm. the souls that you would be redeeming right. through right. your vows yeah. of, of yeah. celibacy. And uh, it's funny you should mention that because I attended the ordination mass too. Yep. Yep. Yes. And it made me a little emotional to see that you also take vows pretty much similar to marriage vows. Mm -hmm. Like you say, I do. Yep. Yep. And that was like a wow moment for me. I had tears. I don't know why, but mm -hmm. I did. <laughs> so, so I think in many ways, yes, this is a marriage. Yeah, and and yeah. one of my friends uh, also said once, today I celebrate XX years of marriage. Mm -hmm. But he's a priest. Right. So, oh, like yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. He, he worded it that way. And that touched my heart too because yeah. look at him so many years and the years were in double digits by the way okay. and yeah. and he looked at it in such a romantic way mm -hmm. for lack of a better word but yeah, yeah. yeah romantic way yeah. Uh, but with so much devotion mm -hmm. unwavering devotion yeah. Yeah. so yeah. I think that's beautiful mm -hmm. and especially for you in your case where you have a very real experience mm -hmm. of that and yeah. you were able to make that decision was hats off to you father yeah. hats off to you and may <laughs> god you. bless you in your journey thank you so much uh, yeah. last but not the least mm -hmm. uh because production is after us mm -hmm. uh how would you like to be remembered and what sort of legacy would you like to leave behind if someone says oh i met father ryan today and he he, for example, heard my confession. What would you want them to go away thinking? Yeah, I've I've really been thinking about this question and yeah. very kind of succinct. Yeah, to be known as a humble and holy priest. Yeah, who loved well. Yeah, you know that that is what I pray. I can live up to each and every day. Like mm -hmm. I can continue to grow in. Mm -hmm. Um, to con to constantly be humble, you yeah. know, before God, before others. Mm -hmm. um, however much experience that I have, mm -hmm. um, however much I'm looked up to as mm -hmm. as a spiritual leader, to always be humble, to be holy, mm -hmm. to daily grow in my devotion to yeah. our Lord, yeah. um, to Our Lady, yeah. um, to be holy, to inspire others to be holy, mm -hmm. and to be known as someone who loved well, yeah. you know, that loved fully, um, those entrusted to me, mm -hmm. God, everyone that I encounter. Mm -hmm. um, that's it, really. That's it. Yeah. I yeah, think that's, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about, yes. And that's, even though you put it in simple words, that means a lot. Mm -hmm. And I congratulate you once again on behalf of Radio Maria Canada. Uh, thank you, Father, for making the decision you made all through God's grace. Mm -hmm. And we wish you his choices blessings on your priestly journey thank you so much and with that we wrap up our conversation with father ryan truly his grandmother's prayers have brought him so far and we are sure that with the prayers of his parishioners well-wishers and family he goes further on in his journey with christ god bless you father and may our lady constantly guide you
You have been listening to Voices of Vocation here on Radio Maria Canada.